Gold bars gain further over $1,300 as 2018 starts risk on, dollar falls for New Year. Gold bars traded in London's wholesale market rose to 15-week highs above $1,300 per ounce against a falling U.S. dollar as 2018 got underway on Tuesday, rising almost 1% from before New Year. Global stock markets also gained as the dollar extended last year's 9.8% drop against the world's other leading currencies, its worst annual fall since 2003 according to Reuters. The price of wholesale gold bars rose 11.9% versus the dollar in 2017, finishing with the precious metal's highest year-end close since the record peak of 2012 thanks its best year-on-year -year performance since 2010. Anti-government protests meantime continued across Iran, where the theocratic regime says 22 people have now died since marches and rallies blaming it for high inflation and falling real incomes began a week ago. To mark New Year 2018, the regime in North Korea unveiled a giant ice sculpture of its Hwasong-15 intercontinental ballistic missile, part of the nuclear arsenal leader Kim Jong-un claims can now reach any part of the continental United States. The US dollar is soggy. Today's economic data is strong, risk is on, investors are looking for yield, and the year won't start until after Friday's December U.S. employment report, says FX analyst Kit Juckies at French investment and bullion market-making bank Societe Generale. Priced in the dollar, large gold bullion bars meeting the London good delivery standards rose above $1,313 per ounce on Tuesday, some 6.1% above mid-December's five-month low. Silver rose less steeply from before New Year, having already touched Tuesday's top at $17.10 on Friday for a 9.4% gain from early December's drop back to July levels. Platinum prices also rose, hitting a one-month high against the dollar at $938 to trade 7.4% above mid-December's near two-year low. Versus China's yuan, the dollar meantime fell below 6 yen and 50 cents on the forex market its weakest level against the Chinese currency since August's 14-month low. That's saw Shanghai gold premiums, over and above comparable London quotes, begin 2018 some $1.25 below the typical incentive for new imports to the world's NO.1 consumer nation of $9 per ounce. Interest has been fairly muted in Asia over the past few weeks as the premiums stayed fairly range-bound around $8-$10. Says Tuesday's note from Swiss refiners MKS Pamps Asian team, although seasonal buying in January ahead of Chinese New Year should provide support in our time zone. There is very real potential for physical interest to drive the gold price even higher throughout January. From here, dips below $1,290 should be well supported, while next major resistance stands around $1,325 minus $1,330. After gold prices exceeded the technically important 200-day moving average and, a short time later, the 100-day moving average, says a note from the commodities team at Germany's Commerce Bank, this allowed it to rise above the psychologically important $1,300 per trey ounce mark again. Speculative financial investors also played a part in the latest price surge, Commerce Bank adds pointing to positioning data from U.S. regulator the CFTC showing how non-industry traders in COMEX gold derivatives grew their net bullish betting by over 40% since mid-December. Net of their bearish bets, hedge funds and other managed money traders under the CFTC categorization grew their bullish positions by 26% in the week ending Tuesday the 26th of December. Reaching the notional equivalent of 341 tons, that was still one-third smaller than the last 10 years average. Silver betting in contrast remained negative as of Boxing Day for a third week running, equal to minus 1,105 tons against a 10-year average of plus 3,992 tons. Across 2017 as a whole, the giant shares Silver Trust the largest silver-backed exchange-traded vehicle, shrank some 6% as shareholders liquidated the stock, needing 9,972 tons of bullion to match the value of its shares outstanding. The giant SBDR Gold Trust meantime added 23.6 tons of bullion in 2017 to back the value of its shares as investor for the vehicle grew 2.8%. Taking the exchange-traded trust fund's total backing to 837 tons, that was only one-seventh the inflow of 2016, 
when the Brexit referendum and U.S. election saw strong investor demand for gold bars, coins and exchange-traded proxies. On a daily basis, the one-month correlation between net investor demand for the GLD's shares and the dollar gold price also weakening, averaging 0.11 in 2017 against 0.38 in 2016 and 0.21 in 2015. A major shift in sentiment will drive prices in the new year. With such a solid end to 2017, it prompts the question what we might expect of gold in 2018. The most immediate question is whether or not it will pick up where it left off 2017 and continue its climb into the new year, or fizzle and spend the year going sideways or worse, down. I have refrained from the perennial turn of the year prediction sweeps takes for a number of years, but I will venture out on the limb this year to say a price in the mid minus $1,500 S looks achievable in 2018. Coming off two successive positive years, gold seems to be building toward something. Fizzling or dropping seem unlikely given 2017's surprise performance and the general state of global equity markets, most of which seem to be overpriced, overloved and over the top. 2017 will be recorded as a transition year for gold. 2018, in my opinion, will go down as the year gold reasserted itself as a primal force in the global financial marketplace. I base that opinion not so much on the fundamentals or a technical reading of the charts or anything overly scientific for that matter, but rather on a gut feeling that comes with being in the gold business for 45 years. When all is said and done for 2018, after all the factors have been weighed and measured, I see sentiment, a thing that cannot be measured or weighed, emerging as the principal determinant for gold in 2018. Investment capital is forever rummaging around for an opportunity and smart money will always find what is undervalued. That in a nutshell is what gold has going for it as we enter the new year. In 2017, we saw the first signs of a sentiment-driven, smart money migration to gold, a vanguard led by professional investors who govern institutional trading desks and manage multi-billion dollar hedge funds. In 2018, cash flush private investors, absent the past year, will join with professional money in the pursuit of gold both in physical and paper forms. That should be enough in my view, to generate a 20% improvement from December's closing number and put the price in the $1,550 minus $1,560 range. As for silver, I would not be surprised to see it trading over $22 at some point during the course of the new year, the equivalent of a 30% price increase. It has a history of outperforming gold on both the upside and the downside, and this time around is unlikely to be an exception. Silver will also continue to benefit from its new role as a safe haven asset and junior partner to gold in the asset preservation business. Gold investment jumps into 2018. Gold investment ended 2017 with a bang as demand hit a 13-month high at here at Bullion Vol, writes Director of Research Adrian Ash. Bullion Vol users added almost two-thirds of a ton to their total holdings in December. The heaviest net investment demand since November 2016 saw Donald Trump win the U.S. election. That inflow of 659 kilograms took their total holdings, vaulted in each client's choice of London, New York, Singapore, Toronto or Zurich, to a new record of 38.7 tons. December also saw the strongest month of 2017 for silver demand, with bullion vol users buying 10.9 tons net of client sales the heaviest addition since November 2016. That took total bullion volt client holdings of silver to a new record above 700 tons. But for both metals, 2017's stock market boom saw private investment respond tactically to bullion prices, taking profits, buying the dips, and almost having net demand from the year before. Full year 2017 gold investment demand totaled almost 1.5 tons on bullion vol down 45.5% from 2016's four-year record of 2.7 tons. Last year's total silver inflows meantime totaled 53.8 tons, down 46.0% from 2016. For 2018 the key as ever will be what happens to other asset classes. Investment demand for gold is likely to remain muted if the stock market's bull run continues. But the best time to buy insurance of course, is before you need it, a fact bullion vol users appear to understand. 
As 2018 approached, December saw global stock markets close out their fifth annual rise in succession on the MC World Index, while cryptocurrency Bitcoin sank more than one-third after setting fresh record highs, more than 12 times its price at the start of last year. The gold price meantime fell 1.6% on its daily average to set a five-month low in dollar terms. And for the 11th month of 2017, the gold investor index moved in the opposite direction, rising to match May's peak at the highest level of the year at 55.3, up from November's 53.9 reading. The bullion vol gold and silver investor indices provide a unique window onto private investor sentiment in physical bullion. Using only proprietary data from Bullion Vol, the 24-hour precious metals exchange online where 89% of users live in Western Europe or North America and now caring for $2 billion of client property, each series shows the balance of net buyers over net sellers across the month as a proportion of all owners at the start, rebased to 50. Learn more about the Gold Investor Index methodology in this article for Bullion Trade Body The Mus Alchemist magazine. A reading above 50.0 indicates more buyers than sellers. The Gold Investor Index peaked at 71.7 in September 2011, and set half-decade lows at 50.5 around New Year 2015. Its solid pattern in 2017 of moving inversely to prices, meaning that the balance of private investors buying was greater when prices fell and smaller when they fell, is unprecedented on the data series, starting in October 2009. As the month average gold price slipped in December, the number of private investors using bullionvol.com to start or add to their gold holdings rose 11.4% last month from November. Reaching a three-month high, that was some 7.8% larger than the previous 2017 monthly average. The number of gold sellers in contrast fell 12.5%, dropping 21.3% from Jan to Nof. 2017's monthly average. The number of silver buyers meantime jumped 27.2% last month from November, reaching the largest total since July as the month's average silver price fell over 4% against the dollar to a five-month low at $16.16 per ounce. In contrast to buyers, the number of silver sellers fell alongside prices, down 28.4% to its lowest level since July. Together that pushed the Silver Investor Index up from 51.0 to 53.9, the highest reading since July. Despite the festive season, December's drop in precious metals prices also saw a sharp upturn in the number of first-time users on Bullion Vol, up 14.8% from November to the fifth largest influx of new precious metal investors of 2017. 6.4% Ahead of the five-year average, December's upturn in new interest was led by growth in new users from Germany and Italy. Across 2017 as a whole in fact, only Germany has grown faster than its five-year average amongst Bullion Vol's top 10 markets. There are no doubt cultural reasons for this, as we examine in this article for the World Gold Council's latest gold investor magazine. But perhaps the single greatest reason is the country's famous attitude towards insurance. Savers elsewhere now planning their investment strategy for 2018 might do well to take note. The past cannot promise the future of course. But gold has risen every year that the S&P 500 index of US stocks has lost 10% or more. Putting just one tenth of a portfolio and otherwise split 60, 40 between equities and bonds would have had the worst loss for UK investors of the last 40 years, when the Lehman's collapse saw markets crash worldwide a decade ago. The global financial crisis may seem a long time ago today. But the US stock market has risen every year since, its second longest unbroken run ever. Gold isn't guaranteed to rise when the S&P next falls. But that drop in equities is a question of when, not if. History says gold has offered a simple and useful route to investment diversification throughout modern times. Priced in the dollar, large gold bullion bars meeting the London Good Delivery Standards rose above $1,313 per ounce on Tuesday, some 6.1% above mid-December's five-month low. Silver rose less steeply from before New Year, having already touched Tuesday's top at $17.10 on Friday for a 9.4% gain from early December's drop back to July levels. Platinum prices also rose 
hitting a one-month high against the dollar at $938 to trade 7.4% above mid-December's near two-year low. Versus China's yuan, the dollar meantime fell below 6 yen and 50 cents on the forex market, its weakest level against the Chinese currency since August's 14-month low. That's saw Shanghai gold premiums, over and above comparable London quotes, begin 2018 some $1.25 below the typical incentive for new imports to the world's NO.1 consumer nation of $9 per ounce. Interest has been fairly muted in Asia over the past few weeks as the premiums stayed fairly range-bound around $8-$10, says Tuesday's note from Swiss refiners MKS Pamps Asian team. Although seasonal buying in January ahead of Chinese New Year should provide support in our time zone, there is a very real potential for physical interest to drive the gold price even higher throughout January. From here, dips below $1,290 should be well supported, while next major resistance stands around $1,325 minus $1,330. After gold prices exceeded the technically important 200-day moving average and, a short time later, the 100-day moving average, says a note from the commodities team at Germany's Commerce Bank. Gold bars gain further over $1,300 as 2018 starts risk on, dollar falls for New Year. Gold bars traded in London's wholesale market rose to 15-week highs above $1,300 per ounce against a falling U.S. dollar as 2018 got underway on Tuesday, rising almost 1% from before New Year. Global stock markets also gained as the dollar extended last year's 9.8% drop against the world's other leading currencies its worst annual fall since 2003 according to Reuters. The price of wholesale gold bars rose 11.9% versus the dollar in 2017. This allowed it to rise above the psychologically important $1,300 per trey ounce mark again. Speculative financial investors also played a part in the latest price surge, Commerce Bank adds pointing to positioning data from U.S. regulator the CFTC showing how non-industry traders in COMEX gold derivatives grew their net bullish betting by over 40% since mid-December. Net of their bearish bets, hedge funds and other managed money traders under the CFTC categorization grew their bullish positions by 26% in the week ending Tuesday the 26th of December. Reaching the notional equivalent of 341 tons, that was still one-third smaller than the last 10 years average. Silver betting in contrast remained negative as of Boxing Day for a third week running, equal to minus 1,105 tons against a 10-year average of plus 3,992 ton, finishing with the precious metal's highest year-end close since the record peak of 2012 thanks its best year-on-year -year performance since 2010. Empty government protests meantime continued across Iran where the theocratic regime says 22 people have now died since marches and rallies blaming it for high inflation and falling real incomes began a week ago. To mark New Year 2018, the regime in North Korea unveiled a giant ice sculpture of its Hwasong-15 intercontinental ballistic missile, part of the nuclear arsenal leader Kim Jong-un claims can now reach any part of the continental United States. The US dollar is soggy. Today's economic data is strong. Risk is on, investors are looking for yield, and the year won't start until after Friday's December U.S. employment report, says FX analyst Kit Juckies at French Investment and Bullion Market Making Bank Societe Generale.